spot and we'll see you now. Hello, Pop. Hello, Elizabeth. Well, I can't think of anything more pleasant than seeing you. I thought you'd be surprised. Sit down. Well, you'll have to give me some clues so I'll know how to uh, conduct this investigation. Is this a personal or an official visit? Well, I don't like that word, official. After all, I am the head of the homicide squad. You haven't uh, committed a murder, have you? Please don't joke about my coming here. I'm sorry. It's about Van. I hardly know where to start. Well, perhaps I can help you. At the time when you, uh, well, threw me over for Van, I made the rather rash promise that you'd find me waiting if ever you grew tired of Van. Is that it? It's more serious than you think. I love Van with all my heart. Possibly too much. And I'm afraid of losing him. Van been making a fool of himself again? Oh, he's become involved with a rather notorious gold digger. Oh, Miriam, I don't think I'll come in tonight. It's getting a bit late. Oh, come on in for just a minute, Van. I want to talk to you. All right. Darling, when are we going to be married? Oh, dear, now let's not go over that again. Don't let's spoil a pleasant afternoon with another argument. But you promised me. Now, you mustn't take things a man says when he's tight too literally. We're getting along very nicely as we are now. Listen, big boy, you're not talking to a gaga. I happen to know what it's all about. You'll keep your promise or I'll raise a stink that'll smell up your whole family. <laughs> now you're wowing me. <laughs> Hello, Pearl. When did you get in? About half an hour ago. It was a rather heavy program. Miriam just came in with Van Campen. She goes out tonight. I hope she forgets to lock that window. She went out about noon. But I can't take a chance in crossing that roof in broad daylight. Couldn't you get a wire or something and pick the lock? That would be too obvious. Anyway, I'm not a regular second story man. This business is getting on my nerves, Jose. Can't we go away and forget about it? Nothing will ever happen. Now, you be a good girl, and I'll give you a call the first thing in the morning. Okay. Oh, by the way, how'd you like those records I sent you? Well, they were all right. I need some more perfume, though. I'll see that you get it. Bye. Bye. you get in here? They still make bath keys. Well, spill it. What do you want? I need some dough, kid. I'm on the spot. You've had the last dime you'll ever get out of me. I'm through. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You can get out and stay out. Hmm. Five grand, Miriam. That's the figure. I haven't got it. How about Brunel? I suppose he hasn't got it either, hmm? You want me to tell him? Go ahead. I don't care what you tell him. I might even decide to tell Van Kempen. You'll never do that. Oh, you're planning to marry him? I'd forgotten. Here's to the happy bride. Stop trying to be funny and get out. 
five grand. I've got a date with Fernell tonight. I'll see. Hey, your jewelry's worth more than that. Well, what if it is? Well, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> You'll take it over my dead body. I'll try and get it out of Brunel. Now beat it. Yeah, sure. That's all very interesting, Brunel. But what am I supposed to do about it? She might sue me for breach of promise. That's not entirely the law, President. I won't permit it. But after all, Arthur, let's be sensible about it. I might be able to... Now look here, George. I won't have that woman suing me. She's nothing but a... Yes, I know. She might be. But you also told me she was very attractive. Now, that's not material. Think of my reputation. I can't have that woman suing me. Why, I'd rather get her out of the way. You're a bit late with alternatives. After all, you did write her letters. Notes, George. Notes, that's all. Now, if you don't want to handle this case, perhaps I'd better go to the police about it. I'll do all I can to help. I do wish, though, this talk this afternoon that hadn't been about someone else. I wish it had been about you and me. You're making me self-conscious, boss. You know how I feel about Van. Well, I come second to him, don't I? You know that. <laughs> Well, now then, Beth, don't worry. I'll try not to. Goodbye. Goodbye, Bob. Now, listen. You're in no position to be dicking around like this. You're in trouble. Now, if you want any help, you've got to come across, or else... Or else what? You know. The boss said, lay it on the line tomorrow. Now, that don't mean day after tomorrow or next week. Uh, you know that. I'll have it. Tell him I'll have it. The kingdom again? Maybe. Or if not, there's other ways of getting it. The boss said cash this time. No jewelry. Say, listen, I'm not stalling. I'll have it. You tell him I'll have it. I hope you ain't. My advice to you is to see her and put the screws on. See her tonight. Can't tonight. Got a heavy date. Remember. Say, Nick, why don't you get a piano in here or something? Get some music. Music, I like some life. Ronnie, old dear. I need some money. Of course, dear. How much do you need? I need a lot. Haven't failed you yet, have I? How much? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand? Oh, Miriam, that's a lot of money. Here, I'll, uh, I'll give you a few hundred. I need five thousand. What for? I can't tell you, but I must have it. I'm in serious trouble. Dear, tell me what your trouble's on. Maybe I'll be able to No, I can't enough. do that, but I simply must have it. Here, Mary, this is absurd. You can't tell me what you need it for. Why, I'm not sure you're going to feel well. It's just a racket. It's not a racket. I need the money and I mean to have it. I can't give it to you. You will give it to me. Suppose I were to mail one of your letters to your wife. Oh, you wouldn't do that. No, wouldn't I, though? Suppose I were to sue you for what you promised. You can't do that. Think what it would have mean. Think of my reputation. <laughs> That's just what I am thinking of, your reputation. Why do you suppose I've been putting up with you for the last few months? Going out with you, having you up to my apartment. You're probably conceited enough to think I like you. Like you? I hate you. You posing as a pillar of society, sneaking around to see me. You're nothing but a dirty hypocrite. Now that's enough. Don't make a scene here. Let's go. It's getting late. 
I know it. But Locke's in our favor. What's happened? She just came in about an hour ago with Ron Nell. They almost came to a fist fight. Then she drew the curtains, and I couldn't see what happened after that. But she did open the window some. Has Ron Nell left? I don't know. I haven't heard anything since. I think she's asleep. Lying on the bed there for 45 minutes. Now is the best chance I've had. I think I'll call her. But suppose she should wake up. You can't tell what she'll do. She might have you arrested. Nobody knows that I'm in your apartment now. I'm going out through the back and walking through the lobby so they'll see me. Then if they catch me on the rope, I can say that I was looking for something that fell out of the window. Now keep watch till I come back. Be brave. Have a time to get a coffee, please. Only get a cup of coffee, please. Thank you. Good evening. Howdy. I heard that noise. What happened? The dressing table drawer fell to the floor. But Miriam didn't hear it. She's dead. Oh, Jose. Why did you do that? I didn't. Don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. I'll stick to you. Only tell me the truth. I'm telling you the truth. She was dead when I went in there. I don't know how long. But if anyone knows that I was in there, I'll get the blame for it. We'll have to plan an alibi. Oh, I wish you'd listened to me and not gone in there. Can't be helped now. I got what I went after. Pearl, are you game enough to make the man downstairs believe that Marion was alive when I left her apartment? I'll do anything for you. You know that. All right. I'll go back to her window and lock it. You come around the hall and let you in. Oh, I don't want to go in there. I'm afraid. You'll have to. I'll leave my gloves. When I'm going, you phone downstairs and ask the man to catch me. I'll duck. When he can't find me, Said that it isn't important, that I can get them tomorrow. But suppose it doesn't work. Oh, I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you. Buck up now, darling. We haven't any time to lose.
I'm going to leave my gloves on this chair. And as soon as I have time to go out through the lobby, you call the man downstairs. Then go out this door. It will lock by itself. You told me the truth, didn't you? You know, about not doing it. Of course I did, darling. Now keep a brave heart. Good night. Good night. Just a minute, I'll see if I can reach him. I'm sorry I couldn't get a hold of him. It doesn't matter. He can get them the next time he calls. Thank you. Hello, Van. I haven't seen you for ages. I want you to have lunch with me. Say, that's an idea. Why not make it today? That's fine. Now pick me up at the office about 12.30, will you? Uh, just a moment, Van. What is it, Dave? Just wanted to tell you I'm going out. There's been a murder. There's always a murder. Who is it? Some Jane by the name of Miriam King. Just a moment, Dave. Well, Van. We have to postpone our luncheon engagement. Oh, well, you'll hear about it sooner or later, so I may as well tell you. Miriam King reported murdered. What? Why, that's terrible. How did it happen? Now listen, I want you to do something for me. You take that case yourself. You may not know it, but Miriam King and I were, well, I'll come over and see you right away. All right. I'll meet you up at her apartment. Get Miss Elizabeth Hawthorne on the phone, please. How did it happen? Word just came in, her maid found her in bed fully dressed. Dead as a door now. Well, get the coroner and the fingerprint men down there at once. I want a list of everybody you called on in the last couple of days. I'll be down there myself in a few minutes. Right, Chief. Hello? Oh, Beth. Was Van with you last night? Why, yes, of course. How did he act? Perfectly normal, the way he usually acts. Matter of fact, we were out until very early this morning. Well, I don't think you need worry anymore about that King girl taking him away from you. He's just been found dead. Oh. How awful. Well, thanks so much for calling, Bart. I'll be seeing you. Right.
Oh, uh, just a few questions, Mr. Duval. How long have you worked for Miss King? About four months. Right after she came to this apartment. Do you live here? No. I come in the morning about uh, 11 o'clock. Miss King was a late sleeper. And you uh, returned after dinner? No, sir. Generally, I leave in the afternoon. She usually had dinner out. Did you notice anything unusual in this room when you came in this morning? Yes, sir. The lights were still on. Does that often happen? Oh, sometimes. In this room, but never in our bedroom. Were uh, all those windows locked? Yes, sir. Oh, I think so. They were locked. I did not examine them before I went downstairs to tell the manager. Can you think of any reason that anyone might have had for killing Miss King? Oh, no, sir. She had many friends, but they all like her. Did she have much jewelry? Oh, yes, sir. She had always something new. Where did you keep it? In the dresser, on the top drawer. Do you think she was killed for her jewelry? Well, she might have been. There's no jewelry in the dresser now. Have you ever had any trouble with Miss King? No, sir. Well, that'll be all for the present, Mr. Bell. We uh, may have to talk to you again later. I hope you don't think I did it. Well, I'm quite sure you didn't. Try and get a description of the jewelry from her. Don't bother her after she leaves the apartment, but don't let her out of your sight. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, let me have those gloves. Oh, doctor, are you able to find anything? Well, offhand, I would say natural death, following heart attack or suffocation. Excepting there's no signs of struggle or distressed features. Are you able to determine the time of death? I would judge between, uh, oh, 11.30 and midnight, no later. Probably a poison. Undoubtedly. Yet the symptoms are very confusing. Suicide? Well, I'd be able to answer that better after the autopsy. Well, let me have a report as soon as you can. Yes, sir. Jürgen, you'll take up your duties in this apartment. No one's to be allowed in but the fingerprint men. I'll arrange it for a relief for you. Okay, Chief. Say, Chief, here's a list of the people that called on me yesterday. Van Kempen, Mr. Scott, Mr. Burnell, Mr. Marino, and a young lady. Didn't get her name, but I've got a pretty good description of her. Were all these people allowed to go up, or were they announced? Well, she always insisted that her callers be announced, with the exception of Mr. Scott, as they were old friends. The night man said that Mr. Moreno went up late last night without being announced. He was her last caller. But she talked over the telephone here to the operator after he left the apartment. So she must have been alive at that time. What time was that? between 11 and 12. Do you happen to know Mr. Bonnell's initials? Arthur B. He's a broker. Uh, could you get me his address? Yes, certainly. Get a description of Miss King's jewelry from Brown. Then set a detail round to all the fences. Yes, sir. Hello, Bart. Oh, hello, Bart. I'm glad you volunteered to come down. But one or two questions I want to ask you. The men here say that you called on Miss King yesterday. Yes, I did, late in the afternoon. Have you found out who killed her yet? No, we haven't uncovered anything of unusual value as yet. Come on, I want to see her. Now, wait a moment, Dad. I wouldn't go up if I were you. It'll only upset you. The men are up there now, and uh, they don't want to be bothered. Now, don't you worry about my feelings. I'm more interested in the capture of this murderer than you are. I'll help you any way I can. Here's Mr. Brownell's address. Well, thank you. You're welcome, sir. You better ride on downtown with me, Van. We'll talk things over on the way. All right. You know, I had uh, no idea that you and this woman were so close. 
Did you ever meet any of her friends or her family? No, she'd never discuss her family with me. But she knew a girl named Pearl Hope rather well. Lived with her at one time until they quarreled and separated. Did she ever tell you what they quarreled about? No, she didn't. You know if they've met since they separated? That I don't know. Hmm. You, uh, did you take this apartment for her? No, but I probably would have had I met her in time. She moved in there a couple of weeks before I met her. But you did contribute to her support. Miriam had no income of her own, so naturally I supported her. No, on second thoughts, Van. I think perhaps you'd better not go with me on this interview. You might learn things you don't want to know. I want to know everything that's said about her. You policemen have a great habit of digging up all the dirt in a girl's life. She may need a defender. As a matter of fact, I'm the only intimate friend she's had in the past few months. And I'm not going to desert her now. Just one more thing, Beth. You'll be seeing a good deal of Beth now that uh, your interests are not divided. Naturally. This is the only high flyer I ever took. My feelings toward Beth haven't changed. I'm glad to hear that. I wonder if you are. You know, I've always had a feeling that you were just a little bit jealous ever since Beth and I hit it off. I'd uh, like to see Mr. Brunel, please. Will you just wait a moment, please? Ever play the market? <laughs> well, you forget, Van, that I'm a public servant. That position does not carry a very big salary. Well, it hasn't been doing so very well with me lately. I'm sorry, but Mr. Brunel will be unable to see you. Can I do anything for you? No. I must see him. Tell him we'll wait. His entire afternoon is engaged. Couldn't I make an appointment for you later in the week? Give that to Mr. Burnell. Oh, by the way, Van. Are these your gloves? No, not mine. We were found in Miss King's apartment this morning. You think they belong to Brownell? Well, we shall see. They don't belong to a very big man. Step right this way, Mr. Barton. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Henry Barton of the Homicide Squad. This is Mr. Van Kempen. I'd like to ask you a few questions with regard to the murder of Miriam King. So your note explains. Of course, I regret Miss King's death exceedingly. But I must insist that her murder, if it was murder, does not justify your visit to my office. Would you prefer that we visit you at your own home? Don't be ridiculous. I see no reason why I should explain my conduct to you. Now, if there's nothing further I can do for you, gentlemen, I must bid you good day. You understand that considerable publicity might ensue if we are forced to take other means to make you speak? You can't threaten me. And gentlemen, uh, you have me cornered. I'm prepared to place myself in your hands. What is your price? Information and facts. What is your price for silence? I'm an officer of the law, Mr. Burnell. And bribery is a crime. I don't think you want to make any bargain. Very well. Uh, take a chair, Jeff. I've nothing uh, to conceal from you, but neither my uh, family uh, nor my associate know anything about my friendship with Miss King. That would be most disastrous. You saw Miss King yesterday? Yes. I've seen Miss King about twice a week for the last two or three months. We had dinner together last night and returned to her apartment about 10.30. I left approximately 
15 minutes later. Was she wearing any jewelry when she was with you last night? Yes. She wore a necklace and a dinner ring that I had given her. There was no jewelry on the body when it was found. Then you think the motive might have been robbery? Possibly. Would you give me a description of those uh, two pieces of jewelry? A stern and stern could give you a better description. They were purchased there in my name. Was there anything unusual or out of the ordinary in your meeting with Miss King last night? Yes, uh, there was. She made a demand on me for quite a large sum of money. I wasn't prepared to give it to her, and our relations entered in an argument. You felt that you'd uh, given her enough money? Or had you discovered that there were other friends beside yourself? Oh, she hadn't any other intimate friends. She couldn't have had. Why, she was always at my beck and call, and I paid liberally for that privilege. That's why I saw no reason for giving her this extra money. Would you mind repeating, as nearly as you can remember, your conversation with her? Yes, I will, all. Though I feel that uh, to do so would point a great deal of suspicion towards me. I'm sorry, Mr. Barton is not in. It really isn't important. I just wanted to tell him I saw Miss King late last night and thought he might want to ask me some questions. I'm expecting him any minute. Can't you wait? Well, all right, thank you. Do you think Browning was guilty? He didn't say. This gentleman wants to talk to you, Mr. Barton. He saw Miss King late last night. Miss Barton, if you two look me up. Step into my office. I'll be with you in a few minutes. Thank you. Miss King lived at this address with a Pearl Hope a few months ago. Try and locate her. Yes, sir. How about the maid? Well, she went straight home and she hasn't phoned anyone. I got the telephone company watching the wires and Thurston on her trail. Well, hop over to Stern and Stern and get a description of the jewelry that a Mr. Brownell bought Miss King. Yes, sir. Well, do you still want to trail along or have you found out enough? I'll trail along. Right. You, uh, said you knew something about the King murder, Mr., uh... Moreno. I'm afraid I know nothing about the murder. But I was with Miss King late last night. Have you known Miss King very long? No, when she lived on 54th Street and trail along when she moved to the Bannister Arms. Used to see her a couple of times a week. In fact, I saw her last night. Happened to be going by about 11.30 and dropped in. She wasn't feeling very well, so I only stayed a few minutes. Was she expecting you? No. I very seldom made dates with her. Just dropped in. Were you announced by the operator? No. All the boys knew me. I was told that Miss King insisted that all her visitors be announced. Well, the boys will all tell you I never was. How was Miss King dressed when you called on her? She had on an evening gown. And a jewelry? A ring and a necklace. That's all I saw. When you called last night, did you happen to notice whether the windows were open or closed? Closed. Are you sure? Quite sure. I wanted to open them and she refused because she said she didn't feel well and sort of chilling wanted them closed. Do you live in the city, Mr. Uh, Moreno? Yes. Where? The Clinton Hotel. Oh. Then you'll be here permanently. I don't know about that. I've been talking about going to Europe with some friends. Although we haven't set the uh, sailing date. Are these your gloves? So that's where I left them. Yes. How well do you know Pearl Hope? She lived with Miss King in 54th Street. You must have met her there. Quite a few months ago. Quite forgotten. Did you telephone Miss Hope last night before you called on her? I came here to give your hand and not to be insulted. 
I'm telling you I did not see Miss Hope last night. And if I had, it would not have been any of your business. Had Moreno followed? Yes, sir. Why did you question him about Pearl Hope? Oh, it was just a wild stab. When I saw him wince at the first mention of her name, I knew that I'd struck home. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there'd been bad blood between Miriam King and Miss Pearl Hope. What do you think? I don't know. My mind is in a muddle. You know, this has all been a great revelation to me. And I can't tell you how shocked I am. I think Marino knows more than he's told us. Well, why did you let him go then? He'll show us more than he'll tell us. Oh, I see. Here's the coroner's report. Definite traces of amylcanine, a derivative of aconite, were found. Death followed within an hour after injection of the poison. Symptoms would be a feeling of drowsiness, which would account for her being found on the bed, fully dressed. Amylcanine, not fatal if taken by mouth, needs to be injected into the blood. Point of infection, a scratch on the thumb. Probably from a pin or needle or any sharp-pointed instrument, which might have been dipped in the poison. Well, does that give you a clue? No. Not unless the poison is a difficult one to get. We'll look into that. Well, I think if you don't mind, I'll get along, because I've had about all I can stand for one day. Oh, I can quite understand that. Try and spend some time with Beth. Probably it'll ease your conscience. Naturally. Okay, check in later. Well, let me know if anything turns up. I will. Marina went right to phone, called up Pearl Hope. Good. Did you get her address? Yes, sir. Here it is. Bannister Arms, directly across the court from Miss King's apartment. Well, they may or may not have known that they lived in the same apartment house. I think Miss Hope breaks a call. You got them all there? Yep. Two necklaces, two rings, four bracelets, and a brooch. But I didn't know they were stolen. Mr. Scott told me that he and his wife had business troubles, so he had to pawn her jewels. Uh, we'll take them down to headquarters anyway. Yeah, but how am I going to get my money back when I put out on them? Well, I can't worry about that. You'll have to see Scott. Got his address? Yeah, not far from here. Now, here's your receipt. But I don't think you'll ever see him again. Oh, me, oh, me, oh, me. Huh? Yeah, yeah, Central. Give me uh, Brian, 4638. Yeah. Uh, I should do business with such a loafer. Oh, what a gun. Hello? Yes, just a minute. Oh, Mr. Scott. Yeah? You're wanted on the telephone. The Dicks was here and I had to give them up the stuff. Say, why, why aren't you getting rid of it? I didn't have time. Say, I think they're going over to your place now. They was awful anxious to see you. You didn't have to give them my right address, did you? Sure I did. Hey, ain't I a law-abiding citizen? Say, I want you should give me my money back before they catch you. Where's Mr. Scott's room? First room at the head of the stairs. Is he in? Yes. Is anything wrong? Yeah, just wanted for murder.
Just a minute. What are you running for? I ain't running from nothing. I'm in a hurry to catch a train. My aunt and my uncle is down the depot. I guess they can wait. No, no, no. You don't understand. I gotta go to the station. That's all right. We'll see if you get to the station. Wait, look. Hey, you're Scott, aren't you? No, my name is Callahan. Well, Callahan or Scott, you answer the description of the mug we're looking for. Come on along. Hey, look, wait a minute. You're making a mistake. I get you flatfoot put on the spot for this. Okay. I got some influence in this town, too. I don't want to be taking this place. I'm afraid there's very little I can tell you. You lived with her for some time, didn't you? Yes. We had an apartment together downtown. I met Miss King shortly after coming to New York. Why did you stop rooming with her? Was it a quarrel of some sort? Not exactly. More like a misunderstanding. She stayed out late night, and I had to get up early in the morning. We just got on each other's nerves. But you knew she was in this building when you took this apartment. No, I didn't. We had looked at apartments here together once, but I didn't know she was here until I heard she was murdered. When was that? Why, I read about it in the paper this morning. Oh, I see. The news didn't appear in the paper till the noon edition. Oh, well, I slept late. I still thought it was morning when I read about it. What time did you see Marino yesterday? Oh. Your sweethearts, I believe. Well, perhaps I better talk to you some other time. No. I'll tell you the truth. You may not believe me, but I didn't see Mr. Marino yesterday. When did you see him last? A few months ago, just before Miriam and I separated. But I haven't seen him since. Has he telephoned you recently? Yes, he did. Today. He told me I was in danger and would probably be questioned. And he wanted to warn me. Why should he want to warn you if you've nothing to conceal? That's what I told him. But he said you might try to trick me with questions, and he wanted me to be on guard. What did he tell you to say? He didn't tell me to say anything, just said to be careful. I guess that'll be all, Miss Hope. You'll be here if we want you, I suppose. Oh, yes. I'm planning on leaving for Europe to continue the study of my music. But I have to sublet my apartment first. I won't run away. No, I don't think you will. Good afternoon, Miss Hope. Good day. Not a thing. No one called, no mail. In fact, this is a swell way for a strong man to be preserving law and order. Well, you never can tell what may happen here. Don't make yourself at home. Let me know if you hear a man's voice in the apartment across the way. Where well, do you suspect them? I suspect everybody. Hey, how long are you going to keep me here? You're resting comfortable, ain't you? Relax. Oh, Mr. Barton. Here's a description of that jewelry that Brunel bought. It was a pin, too. He took it out yesterday and brought it back again this morning. She said she didn't like it. A pin, eh? Yes, sir. We'll get hold of it and have the point examined. See if there's any trace of poison left on it. Yes, sir. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. We picked up the mug that sold the jewelry. He hawked it at Rubens this morning. Scott's his name. Has he talked? No. Shut up like a clam. But I'll make him talk before we get through with him, or I'll knock him loose from his reason. Oh, everything seems to be here. 
except the necklace and the ring she wore last night. I guess he's got them bunk somewhere. Well, maybe Mr. Scott didn't have them. That's what I've been telling these mugs, but they won't believe me. Well, now you got me here, what are you gonna do with me? Miriam King was murdered. I want to know where you got her jewelry. Oh, so that's it, eh? You're gonna try and, try and frame me for, for bumping her off, huh? Well, go ahead and ask your questions. I ain't gonna say nothing until I see my mouthpiece. Well, that attitude's not gonna help you any. I'm after information. And unless you can tell me where you got these trinkets, I'm going to put you under arrest for murder. <laughs> I know you were in William King's apartment a few hours before she was murdered. And if you can tell me how you persuaded her to give you these jewels, well, it may save your hide. I went there yesterday afternoon to get some dough. Oh, is she ready to give it to you? She was none too keen about it. <laughs> Said she didn't have it. But I made a kick in with the jewels. I told her I would give them back to her this afternoon if she could raise the cash. Oh, then she didn't expect you to pawn them. Well, I didn't care nothing about that. <laughs> you seem to have known this Miss King pretty well. Yeah, for a long time. She was different from most of these girls. You know, I, I broke her into the bright lights, the big time. Yeah, she was just a small town hick when I first seen her. Any more questions? Yes. Was she uh, ever married? Well, no, not exactly. She was engaged a couple of times. She used to pick up a few cents here and now with engagements. Blackmail. Well, most of these chumps write letters, and letters is just as good as checks, if you ask me. Was she engaged to Van Campen? Well, no, she was working up to it. She was going to have him landed in a few more days. Well, was she engaged to Marino? Sure. Well, they busted up, though, just before she moved uptown. Marino went on to make for Pearl Hope. He sent Miriam a lot of letters, though. She still got them. Uh, at least she still had them up to last night. Well, how about Mr. Brunel? <laughs> an out and out steal. What a sailor for a blonde that old baby is. Well, that'll be all for the present. We'll hold these. Hey, look. You can't do that. Old man Reuben will have me in jail if I don't bring this stuff back to him. On the contrary. I'm afraid we'll ask you to stay in jail for a few days at least. No, hey, you can't keep me in jail. I ain't done nothing. Come Wait, on, look. Hey, look, I want to speak to my lawyer. Why don't you? You speak to me. I want to be a lawyer. Hello? There's a man over in that Hope Dame's apartment. I heard him when he came in. Yeah. She said you shouldn't have come here. Then they closed the windows and I didn't hear anything more. Keep an eye on them, but don't leave the apartment. I'll send someone up. Tonight. Now take some men and cover all entrances to the banister arms. Then call up Miss Hope and say that you're from my office. You want to examine her apartment. Arrest anybody who tries to beat it. If it's Marino, take you back to her place and uh, I'll be right along. Right. I nabbed her when she tried to throw these in the river. <laughs> You stole that ring and necklace, and you killed Mary and King to get her jewelry, didn't you? No, no, no. That's all right, Mr. Well. I understand you're under a great nervous strain, and it's quite natural that you might have forgotten to uh, tell us about these things. Yes, I, I forgot. Now, uh, calm yourself and uh, tell us all about this. You see, I needed the money very badly. I thought, as long as the jewels were gone, no one would notice this. I took the rest. But it began preying on my mind, and I tried to put them where they would never be found. 
I understand exactly how you must have felt. Perhaps there are some other things you can tell us that we'd like to know. Did any of Miss King's friends have been a key to the apartment? Oh, maybe Mr. Scott. But I'm not sure. I knew she did not like him. But I'm sure no one else. Did Miss King ever do any sewing or mending? No, she never sewed at all. I did all the mending. Oh, she would not even sew a button on her dress. Did Mr. Moreno ever call at the apartment when you were there? Oh, no, he never came. As far as I knew, he always telephoned her, and she met him outside. I see. You just come into my office for a few moments. Oh. See if Miss Pearl helps upstairs with the please. Miss Pearl. Mr. Dyke. Dyke's calling. Hello, Miss Hope. This is Dyke from Barton's office. I want to look around on the roof outside of your windows and see if I can find anything. Thank you. I'll be right up. There's a detective coming up. He mustn't find you here. That's right. You stick to your story. Thanks, Raymond. Stop where you are, I'll drop you. What's your name? Jose Moreno. Come on back where you came. The idea. As God is my judge, that's exactly what I did when I found Miss King dead. He didn't do it. I tell you, he didn't. You'll have to believe it. Would you mind telling me why you spent so much time in Miss Hope's apartment? I'll tell you. Don't do it, Pearl. It won't do any good. We were married about two months ago. Well, why weren't you living together? Miriam was blackmailing Jose with letters he'd written her before he knew me. She was bitter against the both of us. Had she known we were married, she would have sued him for breach of promise. He knew that would hurt me. Are you in the habit of spending the night here, Mr. Marino? Yes. Two or three times a week. I live at the Clinton Apartments. The employees of this house know nothing of your association with Miss Hope. That's true. I always walked up to one flight of stairs. They thought I was calling on Miss King, and instead I came here. When I stayed all night, I used to go out the servant's entrance early in the morning. On Miss Hope's account. You can understand that. I believe your story, Mr. Marino. Although I don't quite agree with your method. Still, I don't think you've told me all that happened. What do you think I've lied about? I don't think you told me of one trip you made to Miss King's apartment. I told you I was there twice. Once to get the letters, and the next time to unlock the door so Miss Hope could come in there and telephone. She verified that. Yes, I remember. By your own story, you had every motive for murdering Miriam King. I think you neglected to tell me of the visit you made to her apartment while Miss Hope was asleep in the other room. You're trying to make me admit something I didn't do. It's true, I need some more evidence before I can prove it. I'm not quite sure what my next move should be. I'd say put him under arrest. No. I'm afraid Miss Hope wouldn't sleep very well tonight if we did that. Mr. and Mrs. Marino, against my better judgment, I'm going to allow you two to spend the night here. There'll be a guard near, so don't try any uh, sudden trips to Europe. Mr. Barton, everything we told you is the truth. I swear it. We're very much in love. If you can understand that, perhaps you'll realize why we've acted the way we have. Now that our secret is out, we'll do all we can to help clear this up. Yes, I'm sure you will. By not placing you both under arrest is uh, rather unusual. So don't disappoint me. We won't. Do you think he believed us? 
I'm praying that he did. You think he did it? Well, we're closer now than we've been. He had the strongest motives. If you can reach the fingerprint men this late, get them over here. Have them go over the King Apartment for his prints. Especially around the bed where she was found. Yes, sir. Also, check up on that phone conversation with the night operator. Oh, by the way, I'll be at River 1570. If anything important turns up, you can reach me there. Right. Give me an outside wire, please. Can't we talk of something else besides this murder? <laughs> I suppose we should. But I must admit it's the most baffling case that's come to my attention for some time. Have you eliminated any suspects yet? Well, I eliminate them when they eliminate themselves. I just had a report that there was no poison on the pin which Brunel returned to the jewelers. Of course, that doesn't necessarily eliminate him. He could have had a pin in his glove when he squeezed Miriam's hand. Even if she noticed it, she didn't have to pay particular attention to it. Well, I feel sorry for the two honeymooners. Naturally, a woman's sympathy would go toward them. But I've practically eliminated them as suspects. They're not the type. They haven't got that uh, murderous look. How about Scott? Well, he certainly isn't eliminated. Although I don't think he wanted to see Miss King out of the way. <laughs> he had his living to consider. I'm surprised you haven't suspected Van. I have. But he hadn't the motive. You see, he never heard of these other men until after the crime. True, he's spoiled, selfish, just an overgrown kid. He had everything he wanted and a great deal more than he needed. He could afford to buy him himself anything he wants. If I thought he had the desire to commit murder, I'd say that he was temporarily out of his mind. How do you feel? How do I look? <laughs> I always thought you were crazy to show any interest in anyone when Beth was around. Oh, oh by the way, Beth, uh, why did you visit Miriam King yesterday? Don't try to be funny, Bart. Beth doesn't know Miriam. She never visited her. Oh, yes, I did. I went there to try and buy her away from Van. Hmm. What did she do? She laughed at me. Did you become friendly enough with her to uh, discuss clothes or sewing or anything like that? No. Naturally, she had the advantage. She made me feel as though I were a slave begging at her feet. I only stayed a few minutes and then I came directly to your office to talk with you. Do you mean to say you went to Bart's office to discuss me? Yes. I went there to ask him try and get you to go away for a vacation. And incidentally, forget Miriam King. Oh, yeah, not so good. Yes, I'm losing my stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Barton is one on the phone. May I use this extension? Oh, certainly. You shall, Dan. May I have a Hello? Hello, Mr. Barton. Say, Dugan's been murdered. No. Fingerprint man found him when he came. Yes. Dr. Stern is on his way up here now. Was Marina in Hope's apartment when it happened? Yes, he was. So what do you make of that, Chief? He was there when King was murdered. He's there when Dugan's murdered. Must be some connection. Hold him there. I'll be right down. Sorry, but uh, I'll have to leave you. New clues? Worse than that. The man we left in charge of Miriam King's apartment has been murdered. How awful. Yes, it is. I'll have to go right down. May I go with you? Oh, yes, I suppose so. If uh, you feel like leaving Beth alone. Do you mind? Oh, not at all. Go right along. But if you find anything interesting, do call me. I'm as anxious as anyone. Certainly. Oh. Mr. 
been dead about an hour, Mr. Martin. What's the cause? Obviously the same thing that caused Miss King's death. The same symptoms, the same relaxed expression of the facial muscles. Of course, I've only been able to make an official examination so far. But there is a scratch on the right hand. On the thumb? No. On the first finger near the tip. Well, let me have a complete report, so just ready. Yes, sir. Where was he found? He was seated right in this chair. Well, what is it, Dykes? You're dying to spill something. The Victrola was turned on. The record had automatically stopped, but the current was still on. Careful, Bart, careful. Look out, the Baron. I don't want to spoil the fingerprints. I'll be the next. What are you talking about? That Victrola needle was poisoned. How do you know? I poisoned it. Dr. Stearns, Dykes, call the ambulance. Yes. What's the Do what you can for him. This man can't scratch his finger with oh. the same needle that got the others. Get my case right away. Oh, Attorney man. kept my stomach oh. from reaching his heart. Quick, get off your coat. Right right. Sit down over here. I'll give you that arm, quick. afraid of what's going to happen. Now don't talk, Ben. Try and save your strength. I've got to talk. There's things I am. I've got to tell you. I've been an awful fool. I realized at last that all she wanted was money. I tried to break away, but she wouldn't let me. I'd said some foolish things when I was intoxicated. And she was trying to force me to marry her. That would have meant ruin for me, for my family, for Beth, and I couldn't hurt Beth. How did you find out about the amoconine? I read it somewhere. It was easy to get, all simple things. I dipped a whole, a whole package of Victrola needles in the poison and put them in her room. I knew that sooner or later she'd scratch herself with one of them. I didn't want to hurt anyone else, though. I tried so hard to get up to the room that night to get them away, but you wouldn't let me go near that place. No, oh, sir. Maybe they'll give him another shot. It wouldn't do any good. It'd only make the heart pump harder. No, it's all right. I'm only getting what's coming to me. Bart. Bart, you'll... You'll be good to Beth, won't you? Certainly, I will. Certainly, I'll have him try and... Take it easy. Take it easy, man. Yeah. Take it easy. Is it true, or is it just another of his wild stories? I'm convinced that he told the truth. He insisted on signing a statement, clearing all the others. May I see him? Well, I don't think I would if I were you. Bart, is he dead? Yes. Take me home, Mark.